Hi all, welcome back to Cracking the Fang interviews. And if you haven't checked already, we have quite a few uh, videos uploaded that talk about the tech industry, the process around it, and help you prepare for these interviews. So please subscribe. Today I'm going to be talking, talking about a very important topic, which is the interview process at uh, Fang. And um, here I've highlighted the typical interview process for an individual contributor role. Um, there are typically two phone screens. Um, the first one is an introduction call where the interviewer is going through your background, uh, trying to understand how that would be applicable to the job profile that they have open and they're trying to fill. Uh, there's also a resume walkthrough where they ask you different questions about your resume, your experiences, uh, projects uh, you've worked on. Um, the second phone uh, screen interview is usually a little more specific to the role where uh, they're going to try to test fundamentals uh, and vet you before they call you on site. And uh, that's typically also a coding round where they give you a small problem and they expect you to come up with a solution uh, for it and discuss the various trade-offs you make while solving the problem. We'll get into more examples uh, in this video. Uh, the on-site uh, with uh, COVID going on, uh, now called virtual on-site interviews, uh, you should expect um, typically one to two system design interviews. And this could also be a ML system design uh, for AI ML uh, job roles. Uh, then again, one to two coding, in, uh, coding rounds. If you've had one coding round during your phone screen, you might only have one when you go virtually on-site. And typically one uh, domain knowledge interview, which could be for computer vision or NLP, uh, the kinds of questions you should be expecting for this is uh, where they want to test um, you know, what kind of networks you have played with, uh, what kind of techniques you're familiar with. And this could be different for, uh, you know, PR software engineering role where they want to test your fundamentals um, on scalability um, and try to understand uh, maybe a system you've designed or problems you're familiar with in general. And last but not the least, there's at least one behavioral interview. Um, and what they're trying to assess here is cultural fit um, uh, and different companies have different names for this. Google calls this Googliness. Uh, Amazon calls this leadership principles uh, and most companies just call it behavioral interview. We'll get into details of each of them. Uh, starting with the phone screen, as I said, um, they're interested in your background, your um, resume experience, um, where your interests lie, what have you been, um, uh, you know, uh, involved in in the last uh, few job roles and projects you've led. Um, one thing that's very important here is um, they also want to know how do you measure impact of the problems you've worked on? Uh, has it impacted a customer? Have you solved a problem which has uh, provided growth in the customer base? Or have you made the customer more productive? So think about um, uh, impact um, and I would advise you to quantify it with numbers on your resume itself. That helps give a picture to the interviewer uh, quickly. An example would be I've reduced 23% of uh, memory requirement, which um, made the uh, code uh, faster and the customers were able to quickly uh, add and remove data uh, from the database. Uh, these kinds of examples are what they are typically interested in. Uh, then coding, as we discussed, um, I would expect a lead code easy to medium for a phone round since you only have um, around 15 minutes uh, to solve the problem. Uh, an example questions uh, would be uh, find one duplicate element in an array, uh, searching a, a sorted rotated array, or even finding minimum height of a binary tree. Um, I'll get into the, uh, these example questions in later videos, uh, but just wanted to set um, uh, context here. Moving on, um, I touched upon system design or for AI or data science folks, it's called AI ML system design. Um, and these are usually open-ended problems. They are expecting you to design systems to solve a, a customer problem. An example question could be, uh, design a chatbot system that can handle uh, customer bookings. Um, they'd um, also walk you through maybe the experience like, um, hey, I'm uh, airbnb.com and a customer comes in, can you design a chatbot which could help that customer find what they're looking for and help them book? Another example of a system design question would be design a system to match riders for Uber pool. Um, 
So what they want to see here is how do you approach the problem? How do you sort of take this problem and make it more definitive and set milestones and solve it all the way through? And uh, you only have around 45 minutes to an hour to solve this problem. Um, and they do not expect you to find the perfect solution. What they want to see here is how do you scope your solution, most importantly? And then how do you measure success of your solution? And what kind of, uh, when I say success, uh, I mean, what kind of trade-offs are you looking at? Uh, uh, will your solution work for maybe a few users? W would it work for millions of users at once? How do you think uh, of scalability in system design? And the trade-offs with respect to shipping out something in you know reasonable amount of time, here you only have one hour. Uh, and there are gonna be many approaches you could take for this interview, and I'll touch upon those. You could go breadth first or depth first, I uh, will discuss that more in detail. Um, yeah, and then last, last but not the least, how do you set up the data pipeline? Uh, how do you maybe log events or log metrics? Uh, take feedback from customers where they are not happy and use that to improve your system further. I think this becomes a very um, critical part. I'd encourage you to think of this uh, as soon as you start solving the problem, so that the interviewer knows that you're thinking of improving the system, even though you don't have a perfect solution right now. And um, uh, this is one of the most important ones, uh, I would say, uh, which is coding and CS fundamentals. Uh, when I say CS fundamentals, a simple question could be, what is the difference between a stack and a queue? And they would ask you to define this uh, you know, as starters and um, also would like to know applications um, you, know, you, you could find. Uh, how, how do you use a queue or a stack or maybe a heap data structure in practice? Uh, another example would be how do you define a metric to measure error of a speech system? Again, when I give you this question, this is open-ended. There could be 10 types of, or, um, you know, uh, n number of errors, uh, uh, types that are possible. What they want to see here is how do you break them down? How do you think through? Um, an approach could be um, breaking it into type one error, type two error, and so on. And each of these types uh, need to be defined. And uh, why are these more important than maybe others which you haven't mentioned um, for your use case is what you would want to get to. Um, and then coding problems, as we discussed or uh, touched upon earlier, um, examples are find k smallest element in a given array. Uh, this is a heap problem. Uh, uh, a heap is an efficient way to solve this problem. Uh, the other way is sorting. Um, we'll get into these problems more in detail. Uh, then another question could be, uh, write a weighted random number generator, where somebody is giving you weights uh, for maybe you know five numbers in an array, and you wanna uh, you want to generate those numbers depending on the weights given to you. Another question could be find longest common substring between two strings. Uh, here ABC is the longest common substring as you can see. Uh, finding this between these two strings S1 and S2. Uh, could be an example problem you should expect in these kinds of interviews. And here I have a diagram which talks about the key data structures you need to know about before you go for one of these interviews. Start with arrays which are um, simple, uh, then build on top of it using something we touched upon, stack, queues, linked lists, uh, which are all of these are linear data structures and then you could think of nonlinear data structures like graphs and trees to expand on your horizon. So I would start from the left and go all the way to the right in my preparation as you know complexity increases as you go from left to right. And um, we touched upon this earlier, the behavioral interviews. Most companies today conduct behavioral interviews. What are they trying to evaluate you on is very important to understand here. Uh, some questions are more geared towards understanding if you have a team player attitude, you like to work as a team, uh, other questions um, have a customer first approach. They want to see if you are able to think uh, like a customer and solve a problem for them. Uh, some want to evaluate communication skills. Then uh, decision making ability. How do you consider various options and um, uh, how self motivated you are in solving problems and uh, contributing to your group. And again, example questions for this. Um, tell me about a time um, when you listed um, to your team, uh, when you listened to your uh, team members' advice. Uh, where they want to, what they're looking for here is how do you 
seek out opinion how do you incorporate that uh, in a problem you encountered at work how do you sort of take different opinions and perspectives and build a stronger solution there and another example would be when you resolve a conflict with a team member for example you or your team member did not agree on a certain uh, thing but um, you know you you guys came together and you drove that conversation to uh, get him uh, onboard him on your ideas or vice versa um they could also ask you tell me about a time when you failed to deliver results when you know you, you were expected to deliver something but you weren't able to for some x reasons uh so think about these questions and uh, you know i would uh, highly suggest you prepare for them uh and just taking a finer granularity here amazon as i said they they interview you on leadership principles these are very similar to behavioral questions uh but they have their own list that i suggest you check out um i was a snapshot on the right uh, for it um and um, uh, again their leadership principles are like ownership invent and simplify customer obsession most importantly and so on example questions again um you know tell me about the time you, you took a customer first approach this is essentially mapping a customer obsession uh then um, tell me about a time when you failed to deliver results this is sort of showing ownership that even when you know there was a big challenge where you were not able to deliver maybe you rescued the operation or worked around uh, it or figured out a better way of uh, making sure customers got what they needed in the end and um, again um, tell me about a time you went beyond expectations when you, you did more than what was expected of you and again this could fall under the ownership bucket so i highly uh, suggest you sort of break down your preparation depending on what company you're working you're looking to interview for and tailor the preparation accordingly and please uh, feel free to post in your questions um, in the comment section so i can maybe help address them in later videos and thank you so much for uh, watching our video here at cracking the fang interviews uh, please like share and subscribe um, uh, see you in the next one bye bye